This movie series takes a look at materials and maps, which determine the appearance of objects. The objects in this scene are the wrong color and don't have realistic surface details. In real life, an object's appearance, such as color and shininess, depend on how it reflects light and how light shines through it. Different types of substances reflect light differently. In 3ds Max, you use materials to simulate effects including color, reflectivity, transparency, detail, and so on. You can create materials in the Slate Material Editor, which you can open by clicking the button in the toolbar or by pressing M on the keyboard. If necessary, you can resize the Slate Material Editor to see all three columns. You can also minimize it while you work to see changes in the viewport, then restore it when you need it again. You choose Material and Map Types or ready-made materials from the Material Map Browser panel. The View panel is where materials and maps appear as nodes that you can wire together. And you can edit the material and map controls in the Parameter Editor. The interface and available options can change depending on which rendering engine is selected. This movie focuses on the standard materials and maps. Let's start by creating materials for the utility containers in the fenced area. Open the Named Selection Sets drop-down list and choose the Utilities Selection Set. Right-click in the viewport to display the Quad menu and choose Isolate Selection. Now only the utility containers display in the viewport and you're ready to begin creating materials for these objects. Click an empty area of the viewport to deselect the utility set and then select these oil tanks. In the Material Map Browser, expand Materials Standard. Drag the standard material entry from the browser and drop it in the active view. Double-click the standard material node to display its parameters in the parameter editor. In the material name field, enter oil tanks as the material name. The name that displays on the node also updates. It's a good habit to name materials as soon as you create them to make them easier to find in a complex scene. When you create a basic material, start by determining its main color. This is called the diffuse color because it is what appears under diffuse or scattered light. On the Blim Basic Parameters rollout, click the diffuse color swatch. Choose a yellow color and click OK. With the oil tank still selected in the viewport, click Assign Material to Selection. The oil tanks turn yellow. Double-click the node's preview to get a closer look. It has camfered corners, which means the material is used in the scene, and any changes you make show in the scene. So if you increase the specular level, both the preview and the oil tanks become shiny. Specular level controls how bright highlights are, while glossiness controls highlight size. In general, shinier materials have smaller highlights. You've created a basic shiny material, but you can add more detail using images or bitmaps. Bitmaps are a very versatile way to add visual detail to scenes. When you use a bitmap to provide an object's color, it's also known as a texture map. In the view, scroll the mouse wheel to zoom out and hold it down to pan. Drag another standard material node into the view. Double-click the node to display its parameters, then rename the material Generator. Expand Maps, Standard, and drag a bitmap into the view. Select the materials.checker.plate.jpg file you downloaded with the scene. Drag from the bitmap's node output socket and wire it to the material's diffuse color input socket. The bitmap is now wired to the material. You don't have to use Assign Material to Selection to apply the material. Select the generators in the scene, then drag from the node's output socket and release the mouse over a generator to apply the material. Choose Assign to Selection and click OK. Click the material node and turn on Show Map in Viewport to display the bitmap in the scene. The top and sides of the generators look alright, but there is streaking on the beveled faces. Bitmaps are projected onto an object according to the object's mapping coordinates. Primitive objects such as boxes and spheres have default mapping coordinates, but depending on how an object was modeled, any mapping coordinates it may have can become jumbled and a texture won't apply correctly. To fix the mapping, 
use a modifier called UVW Map. Select one generator and in the Modify panel, select UVW Map from the modifier list. The generators are instanced objects, so when you apply a modifier to one, it's also applied to the other. The top looks OK, but all the sides are streaked now. This is because the default mapping is planar, and the UVW Map modifier is projecting the map down onto the object as if it was a flat plane. Since the object is shaped more like a box, select Box instead. Box mapping projects the bitmap onto each side of this orange box gizmo. The pattern is a bit big, so you can resize the gizmo to alter the projection. Now the texture is uniform and looks good from any angle. Exit the isolation mode. You can create a material for the terrain based on the same technique you used for the generators. When you click the Material node and turn on Show Map in Viewport, the ground turns brown, but it doesn't show the texture map. This indicates that the object doesn't have mapping coordinates. Select the ground and apply the UVW Map modifier to assign mapping coordinates. By default, the gizmo is the same size as the ground, and the planar projection works fine in this case. You can clean up the Slate Material Editor interface without deleting the material from the scene. Click a node to select it, and press Ctrl A to select all the nodes. Press Delete to clear the space for further work. You can still see the material in the viewport, and access it from the Material Map browser. If you need to edit a material again, you can click the eyedropper button and click the material in the scene. Part 2 shows you how to apply materials and bump maps to the barracks and sentry box.